he has been with the company for over three years and a registered medical user for six. His background is a bachelor's degree in computer science with experience in web, social media, UX, drumming, and cycling. Mm -hmm. After having completed two of the largest online projects in Iceland at the time of uh, at the time for Iceland Telecom and Iceland Air, he moved to London working on projects for Sony, PlayStation, Virgin, and Nokia. Before joining Meniga, he was the CTO for the Icelandic Constitutional Council, applying design thinking and online crowdsourcing for writing a new constitution. Please give a good hand for Finnur Magnusson. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you hear me, I'm, I'm recovering from a, a bad case of man flu. I'm going to try to do it this way. I got the guys downstairs to make a, a, a special concoction so that you can hear me today. We'll see how that goes. But uh, my name is Finnur, and uh, yeah, I'm a product owner. And I'm going to be just focusing on one thing today. I believe a lot of these things, as previously said, uh, we're preaching to the choir. But a reoccurring theme in the, the presentations today is about people. Uh, I, I don't like to talk about users and consumers and Ob objectifying the people that use our product, I like to talk about people. I'm a, I'm a nerd, I'm a techie, but I'm going to take 30 minutes to focus on the human aspect and how banks can create meaningful engagement. This is a photo from, from last Friday. This is Fritz. Some of you might have met him. He's, he's taking part in a meaningful <coughs> test session with a, with a tourist. So we, my team, we spent a lot of uh, our time engaging with, with our local community here in Iceland. We have a fascinating opportunity in Iceland to, to test new things. And uh, some of the stuff I'll be showing later on are our latest innovation in, in from the product mm -hmm. team. But my focus today is on how can banks build meaningful engagement. Are you, are you with me after the lunch? Are you, are you still? <laughs> have you done this? Can you do this for me? Uh, that's en engagement, full, full auditorium. Now we all feel energized. Someone told me blind athletes do this to when they celebrate the victory. But it gets your energy levels up. And I'm going to go through 40 slides as quickly as I can, hopefully leaving some of our experience behind. But the user aspect, personalization, and the ability to win in the race for, for attention, so a lot of banks come to us saying, give us gamification. We want to compete with Facebook on the, the first uh, screen on, on the mobile phone. And this is usually kind of the, the answer that I give them. So I'm going to break this down into three sections, even though it's just one topic. Uh, first section is around how we build habits. How can we create new habits for people? And like Menegas Vision, how can we help people create new habits around how they use the money, and hopefully more wisely. Um, then I will move on to, to empathy and personalization. It's like what we've been doing in designing our latest user experience uh, to accommodate for all the different types of people that are out there. And last, last but not least, I'll, I'll show you some stuff that is fresh from the, the design machines <laughs> at our headquarters. So first theme uh, is around habit forming loops. How do we create habits? This is a, a slide from a book written by Nir Eyal, which is called Hooked, uh, where he focuses on the, the act, it's like how, how are habits created. And you don't need to read the book, you can just study this cycle. Uh, it has, um, this first step which is a trigger. We all create uh, or, or take action based on triggers. So let's say you get a push notification. Um, I like to take a recent example where my brother had just had a, a new baby, his first baby, my youngest brother, new addition to the family, and I get a push notification, your brother just posted a photo. That's a trigger. It's an external trigger, something you know, that happened in my environment. My action is to open it up and see a, a picture of my, my new cousin, uh, and I get a an endorphin shot in my head and a lot of emotions. So Facebook has just triggered a very important 
uh, moment in my life uh, and I feel very happy. I invest some of my time in Facebook. I create a comment and like and do all the reactions that I have available. And then I close the app later on after having messaged everyone. And then I see my phone light up again. There's another trigger. My mom has just replied to my comment and all the family is joining in. And we keep running around this loop until we don't know why. And I don't know how many of you reach for your phone and check your Facebook feed before you get dressed in the morning, but that's an internal trigger. It's something that you can't explain anymore. It's just something that happens. It's like you have a, a dull moment, maybe at the toilet or <laughs> wherever you're in privacy, and you reach for your phone and you do things that you can't explain why. It's just something that you keep doing again and again in your life. And the more often you go through this, this is how you create a habit. And this is, this is also gamification. This is also Pavlov's dog and all of the, the psychology behind to that. Maybe it's also the reason you know, our politics are, are fucked. <laughs> because we see uh, emotions, we see posts from political parties and we react to that with some sort of uh, emotion. And we don't realize why we do the things we do in the voting booth, but habits. This has been used very successfully by gaming companies and Pokemon Go or, or Gone <laughs> is a recent example. Um, they, they had tremendous success and they had all the elements of the cycle. So the trigger, it, it actually, you know, you went in, there was a lot of, uh, word, of uh, word of mouth marketing around it. The action is going out walking and I do a lot of cycling in Iceland and the positive side of the Pokemon thing was I saw teenagers walking around in my park with their phones bumping into trees and they were gathering on benches close to water <laughs> because that was where they got a reward. They got a, a new icon in their app, a, a Pokemon character. Um, and they invested time and money in this very heavily. But like with many of these very successful games, the reward is it's digital. It's a, it's a badge or it's a, it's a coin, perhaps of little real value, but it works very well to get us churning in the wheel of, of habits. So pulling a lever on a slot machine is a, is a very lucrative business. Um, and they, they did the same thing, but with all of these firecrackers in the gaming industry, they, they tend to come back down uh, because like one of the comments I fished out in my research on this, I, I, I try to follow these trends as closely as I can. One of the trends is like, uh, grinding without reward was one, what one of the users said. That was kind of trying to explain why they didn't use this app any longer. But I'm more interested now in designing for time well spent. So the reward, when I get a, a thumbs up from my, from my daughter after playing four hours of Lego, mm -hmm. this is after her, her seventh birthday, this, this was time well spent. So uh, it got a really emotional uh, reward for me. And there's a really nice TED talk about this. It's like the applications that I reach for on my phone and the things that I use in my digital day-to-day -day life, these are all applications that have that in common that they're giving me some real value, not just Pokemon uh, characters on a, on a screen. It's, it's something that either changes my life or, or gives me yeah, greater happiness or anything like that. So designing for value, it's about removing hurdles. So keeping things simple, uh, but also if you can teach me something. I use medium.com a lot now. I spend l a long time reading insightful articles from my field because every time I close the Medium app, I've learned something new. So I feel that the app has given me something of value. Somehow improving my life, providing better rewards than Pokemon characters, uh, but also ease of use. This to me encapsulates user experience. Um, and I'm gonna talk about cycling and health apps for a while. My team makes fun of me when, when I say, let's, let's pull out a random app on my phone and, and look at how they do it. Because I, I started cycling a few years ago when I lived in London, cycling to work. Promised never to go into Spantex or be one of those crazy middle-aged men in Lycra, which I, I, I can unfortunately associate with very well. Um, I think banking can take a lot of uh, good examples from the fitness revolution that is happening. A lot of people have Fitbit trackers and things like that, where they're, they're setting goals to improve their health. 
And in, at Menega, we talk a lot about financial health. It, it was a, a term that was already being used when I joined the company. So apps like these, they provide a good experience. I can track and I can learn about my behavior. So the first step is give me good, insightful information about my habit, which is going out cycling. How do I compare to others? Am I cycling faster than I did last time? Um, but then, optionally, you can add your own goals. So you can, they introduced weekly goals a while back and totally lit the community on fire. And they had the stats to show this where they actually changed a lot of people's lives. So they went out. I had to explain to my wife on a Sunday afternoon. Sorry, dear. Many of you work with her at Landsbankin. <laughs> um, I have to go out for a two hour ride now because I need to close this circle here on my weekly report. And then in January this year, they introduced a new goal, which was my yearly goal. And I already had a number in my head. And I was like, you bastards. <laughs> it's like, how did you know? It was the best time. They, they've already calculated when is the best time to introduce a yearly goal. Because I was feeling motivated. I just finished my biggest cycling year uh, ever. And I, I put 6,000 in here. It's like, that's ambitious. I actually calculated the, the curve of extra miles I had to do. And then uh, I had to do a lot of travels from Menega. So I'm only at 4,319 as of, as of yesterday. So talking about having an impact on people's lives, I went and did this. If <laughs> <coughs> Because if you look outside, it's, a, it's not a very nice <laughs> season to, to break any cycling records. So I had to go back to my wife and explain, <laughs> yeah, I need this really. Uh, but yes, I've done 300 kilometers in the, the last couple of weeks, and I'm, I'm back on track to finish my yearly goal. And this is an example of an app, and the people that use it, it's like the, the way it's changed my life. I track a lot of things about myself. I'm not a normal person. I wouldn't claim that. Uh, but this is my three years of weight data. So if you go on to data.comet.com, you can track my heart rate and weight and everywhere I've been. <laughs> and this is when roughly the same time I started cycling. And this is when I went to meet Victor in, in Brazil and gained four <laughs> kilos. There's <laughs> 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 a lot of good meat there. <laughs> so I can, I can track some things here, but all of this is related to it's actually the, the additional cycling. I think Bo said in the, in the breakfast, he said, you used to be a chubby drummer. It's like, what happened to you? <laughs> so it's actually something you know, that I, I can relate to. It's like, I will stay true to this app you know, until something breaks. So this was an example, just one example of, of how I've created a new habit in my life. But what we do at Menega as well, we, we monitor these, these patterns and, and things, but I joined Menega after having used the product for three years, and it, it, it actually had a, a very good uh, effect on my own financials. So I, I was exporting my data and importing it manually into Menega and categorizing. So I'm one of the kind of maybe few percent of, of very motivated people in, in the data field. But, uh, and, and that's the reason I joined. I thought, I can do stuff to impact people's lives here. I can, there's a, we have 40 million people with access to Menega today, and it's like, if I can help some of them reach a better financial situation, I'm, I'm doing something of value in my life. But then you start talking to people that are not like yourself, and you realize most of the people are different. Uh, and my goal and my team, what we've been working on is like, how can we get from 15 to 25% engagement in budgeting to a 50 or 100? It's like, how, how can we do that? That's the, the big challenge of, of the fintechs in the world because a lot of people don't care about money. It's like a shocking fact to this <laughs> audience. And <clears throat> I had three quotes um, from a community here in Iceland. This is a recent one. It's a, it's a lady saying she got 70,000 Icelandic and a cash back from our office program. And she loves Menega, exclamation mark. This is something she wrote. Uh, she also knows exactly how much we spent on gas, food, and partying, although I could do with improving the ratio between those three. <laughs> so these are the people we love to hear from. And we, we get this stuff in. That's the benefit of, of running this, this product here in Iceland. This is one I always remember. It's not exactly how, how she said it, but this, this lady started categorizing and splitting her grocery charges, and she spent on candy, and she started she just stopped eating candy. 
lost a lot of weight, saved a lot of money, and said, it's like, this is because of you. So we made a positive impact there. And this is Saisa. Uh, she was complaining on Twitter in, actually, yeah, <laughs> just over a year ago. <laughs> this is in Icelandic, <laughs> but <laughs> I'll translate. This year I, I spent 420,000 on fast food and restaurants. And I thought I was saving. WTF. <laughs> uh, what, what's, you know, getting me pumped. She was motivated. She, she wanted to change something. It's like looking at Benega is literally making me cry. It's when I stepped in and said, Swana, Swana. <laughs> this is okay. Don't, don't cry. It's like, do you want to maybe look and have a visit our office and talk about your finances? And we invited her in. She's been in three or four times. She's a very active Twitter user from M. Howe, which is a college here. And we challenged her to, to cut down on, on going to the cinema. And we would give her tickets if she would just cover it online. She was posting screenshots of her finances. She's a millennial type. <laughs> she, she likes to screenshot her financial app and sharing it with her <laughs> peers. <laughs> so <clears throat> this type of impact is something that, that we want to you know, promote with more people. Um, and like I mentioned before, my, my wife, she works at Landsbankin. She's a clinical psychologist. Uh, and we also have a, a guy in a mobile team. We've been looking at personality traits, so personalization and, and how, how do we understand people better. And one of our mobile developers is doing studies to teach uh, kids uh, math using kind of uh, positive reinforcement. It's a fascinating research. And he's been feeding me uh, research based, based on these five big personality traits. So apparently, we all rank high or low on these, these five things. Um, openness to experience. It's going to Iceland and to the Blue Lagoon. I guess that qualifies as an experience. Conscientiousness, which I can never pronounce, is, is trying to do a good job. I'll explain that in a bit. Extraversion is standing in front of a group of people and saying stuff. Uh, agreeableness, it's, you know, try not to get into fights. And neuroticism, which is just uh, something I'll explain a bit further later. But uh, there's been a lot of studies on how people approach financial management, do budgeting or, or think about money around these five dimensions and without surprise the, this group this is our super user group at Minica so we have we see it clearly from the numbers this tends to be around 20 25 percent of the population different between countries different depending on how old you are people that really like to do a good job financially uh, and then you have uh, this group here that hates our application with a vengeance because they are afraid to see how much money they have or owe. And they're just generally afraid of opening up their online bank. And I think one of the insights I got working with you, Sniper and Landsbankin, when we were looking at the home base, I, I think it was from you, when you said your mobile app, or mobile web, uh, it doesn't have any numbers on the home screen. Uh, I picked it out from there. And it's like, I use that a lot when I'm at work. So I, the, the theory is that people that don't like to know their financial situation really love that home screen because they can go and make a transfer without seeing their situation. Or they can at least also open it up in a safe environment. It was, it was like one of these things you pick out maybe. <laughs> because I meet a lot of people there. And um, the worst scenario I heard, it was a lady that goes shopping for groceries with her kids. and. The kids don't want to go with her anymore because she, she frequently gets a decline on her credit card with all the groceries on the till. And it's like they can't bear the shame of being with their mother, having to take all of that stuff off the till. It's like, I asked her, it's like, why didn't you just check your balance before? It was like, no, I can't. She'd rather go and get the decline. It's like, that, that's the type of stress she's under. And this is the type of people we, we want to help. The consensusness group, Tendency to be organized and dependable, show self-discipline, act dutifully, aim for achievement, and prefer planned rather than spontaneous behavior. This is super user group, easy, easy to accommodate. This group, tendency to experience unpleasant emotions easily, such as anger, anxiety, depression, and vulnerability. This is the group that is doing worse financially, and this is the people we need to reach. And one point, and then I'll leave it, one of the things I don't like is we're talking about all these millennials, but they rank differently on this. So when we're talking about personalization, a lot of 
marketing efforts and development efforts are focused on millennials, but I think it's too broad because in this room we have different characters within that group. Okay, so that's, that's how we split. It's like, this might be a bit crude to just split people into groups like this, but it's roughly 25% consensusness, 25% uh, neuroticism. But then we go through different cycles uh, in our lives, uh, no matter where we are there. It's like, uh, first of January, we see double numbers on Menega.is. We see peaks. It's like people wake up hungover and say, now I'm going to sort out my finances, I'm going to the gym, I'm going to clean out the garage, and they're very, very motivated to do difficult things. But then February comes in with the credit card bill and everything else, and things fall to pieces. So we need to catch them when they're motivated and help them make a plan and then help them stick to that plan. I mean, that, that's one of the things B.J. Fogg has been saying. It's not something <laughs> that I made up myself. He's a scientist at Stanford and he's been studying these motivational waves. And we go through those waves. I learned in Brazil that it's, it's after the carnival. So you wait until, <laughs> what is it? February, oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. In, in Spain, uh, it's September. I heard you go come back from your holiday and you think now I'm going to be you know, more diligent than I spent a lot of money on my holiday. We go through those motivational periods and this is where we see, so one of the complaints I got re voiced a lot when I was joining Minica was uh, it's like the usage isn't enough. It's like the usage numbers aren't good enough. And a lot of that ties to the fact that we started out with these <coughs> These planning tools, the budgeting, the tools that you use that you, when you're very motivated. But the thing is, we didn't have a lot of interaction points uh, catering to the less motivational periods. Um, but high motivation is having a kid, buying your first house, doing something that banks are very interested in. So you need to have the tools to understand and plan those things. Uh, but you also need to support people when they're feeling low and, and they just need to do something simple regarding their financial situation. If I put the Menega features on this graph, <coughs> uh, budgeting, net worth planning, creating rules, doing that type of stuff is something that re requires a, lo a lot of motivation and it's hard to do. Hard is on the left. Um, but categorizing, which has turned out to be one of the, the most habit-forming actions in our new app, it's like something that 60% of our monthly active users do. They confirm or change categorization. It's making the system better for themselves. Uh, they're creating this habit loop where they're repeating this pattern. We've gotten complaints that our category system is too good because it learns and people miss the orange bits because when they take out the app, they want to categorize, they want to do stuff. So, and then we have new things here like challenging and things like that where and these are additional touch points for banks to build habits, but also perhaps help people during different motivational stages in their lives. And to summarize the uh, personality traits and then the motivational peaks and troughs, that's personalization to me. It's like all of the, the screenshots Mikhail Panowitz showed earlier, all of the online banks look the same. All of the online apps look the same. They have your balance and some actions. Uh, that was one of the first challenges. It's like, how, how can we move away from that? And we've been promoting the activity feed for a while, which is putting your, all of your transactions from all of your cards, enriching that, and giving you your data up front. There's, there's an additional action to look at your balance and perform actions. Uh, but also, with our targeting, so, so we've been running this uh, offers scheme here in Iceland for a couple of years. But we're, we're looking at segmentation and how can we learn from people's behavior, both how they use the app, but also the financial profile, to promote the correct financial uh, advice at the right time. So we launched this, uh, the, the new app that we have out today. This is actually the design we're going to launch in the new year. Um, when we launched the feed for the first time, we, we doubled the monthly active user numbers, uh, quintupled the, the weekly active, and we totally rethought the, the categorization side of things, where, where now 60% of people interact with the categorization on, on the phone now. Um, but we introduced a few other new things as well uh, that I'd like to just touch on briefly now. Uh, 
most transaction or, or actually a lot of online banks don't have a transaction detail page. It's like you, you have a list of transactions, uh, but most banks that have a transaction detail screen or a page, they show me metadata. They show me detailed string information, some obscure bank codes and stuff that has no <laughs> relevance to me. Um, and this is, we had a transaction detail screen like that. It showed you some detailed metadata information. But when we launched a new app, you can see this trend here. So now we have 30% of people clicking on transactions and getting something similar to this, where we're just using the data that we have to show them, okay, this is a grocery transaction, so we can tell you how much you spent on groceries for the last six months, and how much of that was spent with this merchant. And you can see the total spent on groceries, you can see a map of uh, where, where you spent, just bring you some additional insight. So the repeat pattern we have now is that, you know, like someone was, uh, I asked someone how much do you spend on fuel? It's like, hold on, open the feed, found the fuel transaction, and click on the transaction detail, and you get that information directly. So giving information is, is value to a lot of people. So it's different from the old approach we had, where you need to go into the website, click on reports, click on category, and go and fetch that information. We're trying to bring that information and maybe surprise and delight people with, with data that they didn't have before. Um, we also, in, in March this year, we launched the, the weekly report, which is a, comes into your feed at 11 on Sunday mornings. Some, you know, we decided that's a good time where you should be reflecting on your week of spending. And this graph is time spent on screen in the app. So this is the average time, 30 seconds. We see we launched this new feature and it's a very information heavy screen. It tells you your income and expenses for the last seven days, shows you the days. Then you can filter on expenses for that day and you see it broken down by category. So I see I have a high spending day on Tuesday. I click here and I see, oh, it's when I went out and bought these guys dinner. Um, so people took uh, over a minute so when we launched it, the average time on screen was over a minute, uh, but then it falls down roughly above the transaction details. And it's one of the most popular screens now. So this is how we're testing new uh, designs and features that promote a habit. And we were testing at Reykjavik University a couple of weeks ago. <coughs> and one girl was there with her two of her friends and she came over and I asked them if they used Menica. And she said, to her friends, it's like, yeah, girls, you should sign up. It's great. You get this weekly report and you totally know where your money is going. And it's like, I just backed away and, and let her do her <laughs> pitch because that was her habit now. And it's like, ah, it's nice to see, see that happen. Okay, I have one minute left on this one. Yeah. I have more, it's okay. Okay. Right, last bit. Uh, I'm going to uh, tell you a bit about how we, we work in the product office, how, how we come up with these new things and, and show you some of the, the latest designs. Um, this year we started uh, adapting a, a process called the design sprint, uh, which is just taking in a lot of kind of design thinking and innovation uh, methodologies. Uh, it was coined by Google Ventures and uh, IDEO. It's a five day, full five day sprint where you have a cross-functional team come up with an idea, so that you vet a lot of ideas and you do a lot of kind of sketching and waste a lot of post-it notes. But then you test it. So you start on a Monday and then you test it with five people on a Friday. Uh, and you don't bother any developers <laughs> in the process. So you don't have to go to your core banking system to check if these things work. You just have a, a high fidelity prototype. It's just pretty pictures, but it gets, gets you instant feedback. And we've done this for a while. People thought it was crazy when we did it for the first time. It's like, you're gonna take developers and put them in a room where there are no computers for a full week. <laughs> But that's where our current life goal uh, component came out of. It's like we've been doing it for a couple of times. And it was a totally new thing. Now we have a separate space for this in the office. And we started doing this with, with customers. Uh, Seda here from, from Turkey, see, we did one over there. She can maybe tell you about their experience. We've, we've done it in Canada and uh, Italy this year. And we, we're doing this almost like a, like a way to to kickstart agile projects. It was very interesting to hear both from Sika and Bo about cross-functional teams, and I'd love to hear more about how you do this type of work, because we have found this is a very cost-efficient way to, to fail early and often. This is how it looks. It's good fun. 
but we always do the testing with people. So um, we try to make the mistakes quickly and early um, because that means if we do this a couple of times or three times before we start developing, the odds of hitting it right are, are so much more. Because testing with five people usually surfaces 70 or 80% of the flaws in your idea and thinking. Usually we get it mostly right, but there's always some insight we pull from those testing sessions that makes it so much better. Uh, and I was just doing the tally uh, this week. I, I don't have the accurate number, but I, I think it's over 80 user testing sessions we've done this year for the concepts and ideas that we're working on. We're totally rewriting <coughs> the user experience for our app and web here in Iceland with our new API. And that has been the biggest value for me uh, during this year. So if you have a chance to, to take part in a user testing session and you haven't done so this year, I think you should set a, a new year goal of, of at least <laughs> attending one. How many of you have sat in on a, like a one hour user testing on your online bank or product? Yeah, it's like eight or nine, it's mostly Menica people. You shouldn't raise your hand. <laughs> 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 okay, that's, that's my challenge for you for, from today. Validate it with data. Have, have the analytics to, to validate once you launch it to a test group or a wider audience. And then, just before I leave, I know I'm over time. Um, we started this, it, the, the code name for our user experience rewrite is Bank42. It's not, it's not a product, it's a, it's a project. It's the, the answer to digital banking life and everything. <laughs> and we have some really nice designers that have been working on this. Um, one of the new concepts that we hope to bring to people here in Iceland uh, in the new year is challenges. So we have our advanced budgeting uh, functionality and a lot of people love that. It's around 15% of people that sign up to Menica are diehard users of our budgeting component. But there's a lot of people that just feel it's too much. It's too, it's too big of a commitment. You're planning a lot of things for the whole year. So what we did in one of these design sprints is with the, we came up with challenges. So in our new app, we're grouping all of your goal settings under a challenges concept, similar to Strava and Fitbit and others. It's a short-term financial challenge that can have a small impact on your financial uh, activity. So we have like a, a spending meter, just total spending uh, for a calendar month. But then we also have a grocery challenge, uh, revise your subscriptions, uh, Take these categories where you can really have an impact and just, just do one month of dedicated commitment. And we've done this internally at Menega two years now where we have a grocery challenge where we set people the objective of cut 20% of groceries for one month. I did that two years ago and then when I tried to do it again, it didn't change much because I had already changed my behavior drastically in how I plan and do my grocery shopping. So this is, this is one of the new things. We're very excited to see how this fares in, in the... Uh, in the market. Um, this is how you set up your, your monthly goals. We also tested this money monster. It's something still on the works. We, we took, this is what digit.co have been very successful with in, in the US. It's a thing that steals money from you. They don't have an interface, that's their thing. You sign up with an SMS and it starts stealing money from your account, small change, based on how much you spend. So we kind of adopted it a bit and we're definitely gonna build it. Uh, it's, it's an idea, so we, we know what your spending pattern is. So the idea is that it's almost like a troll. We have lots of trolls and elves in Iceland. So the troll gets fat if you spend less. So it steals your chains, you know, a euro there or two there. And then you just get a, a message saying how much you saved. And this ties in with all of the craziness of, of slot machines. It's random variables at random intervals. And we tested this with people that didn't have savings accounts, afraid of looking at their balance, uh, took a bus from Evra Breiholt and were half an hour late, and we had to go and fetch them because we advertised for people that don't do finance management. And we tested these concepts only on people that are afraid of finances. And they were all loved the money monster. But then we tested it with people that are very diligent on the finances, and they hated the money monster. It's like, <laughs> how, how can I control it? How much is it gonna steal? Where's the money going? They were like, so, so we, we have to make it personalized. We have to target these challenges based on how you, how you, you know, interact with money. The last one was just finished last week. I'm almost done. Okay. This is my, 
Uh, we tested this at Kex. Fritz was going through this. We, we tested this with 10 tourists last Friday. And the idea, this is kind of the last piece of the puzzle in the, the Bank 42 project. We've taken all of our planning and insight uh, modules, the net worth, the budgeting, and everything else, and combined it in your profile, your financial profile. So the app is the feed, it's your challenges, offers, uh, and your profile. And in the profile, the aim of the design sprint was to take all of these uh, things, these components that you use when you're motivated to do something about your finances, and present it in a more, uh, yeah, in a nicer way to appeal to a wider audience. And we ended up with this almost like, a, like an infographic, uh, uh, yeah, newspaper type of design. Uh, and it's, this is upcoming bills, budgeting, reports, yearly report, peer comparison, merchant count, and net worth. All in one screen. Retna and Tata and Snorri, can you stand up? If you want to see this, Slowly, you need to meet them later on. They have this on their <laughs> phones. <laughs> so we, you're going to participate in some user tests later. These are the people from my team that are behind all of this. Um, so yeah, this is how we're going to group all of this functionality in. And we found that a lot of, there was one guy who hated this. He was a financial engineer and he said, this is too nice. I just want numbers. <laughs> all of the other people, it was like, when can I get this? I wish my bank had something like this to give me a, a a good overview of my finances. So that's, that's what we're building. Uh, lovely to meet you all. Uh, I met some of you in your home countries and I probably will meet some of you <laughs> later. Uh, this is what I want to share. Thank you. Thank you.